Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make Cammy's Lookout from the show slash series Dragon Ball. I really hope that you guys enjoy this tutorial. Now, I don't do this very often, but if you guys like the look of this build, please do remember to hit that like button. It really helped me and the channel out very, very much. This took a lot of building and designing and finally tutorialing, so I'd really love it if you guys could show your love, show your support. If you do like this, please do hit that like. If you do want to make anything else by me, please do consider subscribing to the channel, clicking the little bell next to the subscription button, that'll ensure that you get all my stuff sent directly to your sub box. But without any further ado, let's do this. So, just before we start building everybody, here are all of the materials that we will be needing to make the lookout. Please do make sure that you have access to all of those materials and enough of them as well. When it comes to the amount of space required to make the lookout, I can tell you that I am making my lookout 100 blocks off of the ground. You can make it a lot less. You can make it about 50, but I wouldn't go lower than that. The amount of space that the lookout will actually take up in the air is roughly a 50 by 50 block area, so it isn't too bad. So, do just make sure that you clear any sort of mountains or hills that might be in the surroundings. Make sure that you build it tall enough, and then hopefully you won't even have to worry about how much space you're going to take up. And that's it. I do hope that you guys manage to gather all of those materials. Do make sure that you find a suitable place to build this. And once you do have all that stuff, once you've figured out where you want to make it, once you're ready, we can begin. Step one, Dragon Ball lovers, you are going to have to figure out how high off the ground you want to build the lookout. As I mentioned, I am building my lookout 100 blocks off of the ground. This is actually the 100th block. You can build it a lot lower. I wouldn't go below 50, but that's completely up to you. So, once you have figured out the altitude at which you want to begin building, we are going to start this off by placing a block of iron on top of the last marker block. So this is a hundredth block. I guess that this this is literally a hundred blocks off the ground. Now this iron block is the center point for our build. We want to extend this block of iron forwards, to the left, backwards, and to the right 25 blocks. And we want to use block of iron for this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. And we want to do the same going all the way around. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. And for the third time, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. And finally, for the fourth time, ladies and gentlemen, we want to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So, now, once you've finished that, you should be left with possibly the largest plus shape that has ever been made. Now, what's important about this is that we want to connect all four of the corners together. So, we want to turn this plus shape into a square. The easiest way to do this, I think, is not by counting. I think it is to simply use a little bit of... a little bit of strategy and extending each one of the ends of the rows of 25, extending them outwards a bit, both sides, until they eventually reach a corner point. So that is half of this done. As you can see, we have managed to make a box and we are going to want to do this towards the back. So this is a lot faster, I think, than counting out rows and rows of 24 or 25, whichever it would be. We want to simply extend all of these 
across to each other and we will end up with a rather large it should kind of look like the outline of like a Christmas present. You know a Christmas present that's got like a that's got like a bow that kind of like descends across all sides and it turns into like a big giant like plus with like a ribbon on top. Yeah, there we go. That's what we want to have. So, now we have what is possibly the largest square that, <laughs> that we've ever made. Um we now want to fill this in. Yeah, we want to fill it in with block of iron. So this is obviously going to be quite a tedious and lengthy project. So I'm going to skip ahead briskly and we are going to come back once this has been completely filled in. And this is a very important part of the build ladies, ladies and gentlemen because once this platform has been filled in with block of iron then that will allow us to make everything that exists on top of the platform which uh, is hopefully a little bit more interesting to build than just a giant square. So here here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We have filled in our platform. That is rather a lot of block of iron. Now, once you yourself have managed to make this giant square, all we have to do is we just have to round off the edges to turn it into... It's kind of a circle, kind of a circle. You know, it's, it's about as good of a circle as you're going to make in Minecraft. So, what we have to do is we have to come to each one of the four corners and we have to destroy seven blocks coming inwards from each corner. So, that will look like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And, of course... The other way as well but we already have one block taken care of so we'll count that that'll be one two three four five six seven and then what we do is we take the corner out of here and then we dig inwards one two three and we have already taken out the corner one two three and then all we do is we just dig out that corner block there so we do seven three and then essentially just one and that just rounds off the edge quite nicely so let's do this three more times let's make sure that we can get this right so we take out as a matter of fact we take out the corner and then you can just take out six blocks that might even be a bit easier so the corner's gone one two three four five six corner's gone one two three four five six and then we can take out the corner here one two three corner's already gone one two three and then we can destroy that. So essentially, if you don't count the corner blocks, six, three, one, boom, that's it. So let's do this two more times. So here, take out the corner. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Take out the corner. One, two, three. One, two, three one just like that and this will give us a nice rounded edge and we'll take a look at it from the sky in a moment take out the corner one two three four five six one two three four five six and then take out the corner one two three corner's gone one two three take out the corner there and in doing that we will have and again it's not a perfect circle it's not meant to be but it is definitely a lot more round than it was before and it looks even on all four sides which is the important thing i think and now that we have done that ladies and gentlemen what we have to do is a little bit tedious a little bit tedious but we are going to place upside down quartz stairs going all the way around the edge of our platform now the quartz stairs have to be placed in such a way that they will all connect together and if you don't place them in the correct way they will not want to connect together because stairs are awkward especially upside down ones so you're going to have to be very very careful just make sure that it does all go together because as i mentioned otherwise sometimes they they don't like behaving in the correct way that uh, that you want them to it's more so around like these corners here like if you place it like like this you can see that it doesn't mold together you've got to place it in a very specific way almost like head on in the direction that you're facing that you want it to like um like mold towards it's a little bit it's a little bit weird to explain but it's rather intuitive so i'm sure that you'll uh, you'll kind of get it as uh, as you go placing along and this will aid us in the kind of like in the shape of the platform because obviously minecraft being squares just just mainly squares cubes blocks you guys get the idea it's very important to at every opportunity that we can to uh, try and round things off 
that would uh, that that just makes things it, it just makes it look a little bit more authentic a little bit better and it is it really does just make that little bit of difference um, not so much when you're actually on the lookout of course you know on, when you're on the lookout or you can mainly see is sort of the buildings and the trees and all that stuff but from below it, it does help quite a bit and it's, it's quite a challenge to actually make um, the kind of like circular spherical nature of the lookout but now that we have placed all of these quartz stairs as you can see it goes all the way around we can now finally get working on the actual structures on the lookout of which there's a lot to do ladies and gentlemen we have a lot to do so what's important is that we know where the center of our lookout is so the reason that i know where the center of the lookout is is because of course i placed a row of 100 yellow concretes extending up from the ground so i know precisely where the center is because all i would have to do despite the fact i place a block of iron on top of this i would just have to knock out the top block of the row and then the one above it and then come up into the platform and then place a few rows of yellow or some sort of contrast block anything that isn't block of iron and that's the center of the platform and hopefully I, I don't see how you guys would have been able to do it otherwise really um you have the same center point that you built all of the rows of 25 from now the reason that this center point is important is because this allows us to build the central building here so from this center point i want you to first of all grab yourself the white concrete and i want you to count forwards from the yellow concrete here i want you to count forward seven so that's one two three four five six seven so that seventh block right there and we're going to extend that seventh block left by three one two three and right by three one two three you can even do this by the way if you want you can take that center point and you can do that on all four sides you can go one two three four five six seven and then white concrete left by three and then right by three and um, if we do this on all four sides it's very very even one two three four five six seven white concrete one two three white concrete one two three one two three four five six seven and then white concrete one two three and then one two three but the thing is we do have to figure out which is the front side of our lookout by the way we actually don't have to figure that out until later but in your mind you should you should also by the way figure out where the front of your lookout is so the front of my lookout very easy to figure out i know i know where the front of my world is um it's basically facing the same way as the hello hello neighbor alpha one house over there so uh, just bear in mind which the front side is and we're going to start working on on the front side so i want you to grab the block of quartz and i want you to place block of quartz behind the edges of the row of white concretes and i want you to extend the quartz inwards and like upwards or backwards like whichever direction it is and i want you to extend the quartz like in and up and out basically just kind of forming the corners of the circle and i do say corners because again i mean you know it's not exactly like it's it's not perfectly round so um you know that, that basically just yeah the corner parts of the circle so to speak so the long sides are white concrete the corners are block of quartz and we're going to raise up all of the white concretes and the block of quartz by four so each of them one two three four and when it comes to the block of quartz you only have to really um, extend the outer blocks of quartz so you don't have to go crazy um, extending all of the inner blocks of quartz it will look a lot cleaner on the inside of the building so that is something that you may want to do but um technically speaking you don't have to do all of the blocks in the middle you only have to have the blocks at the tops and the bottom extended i'll show you exactly what i mean when we when we do eventually get there but let's focus our time here on extending all of the outer blocks up by four now the reason that i said that it doesn't matter exactly which which side is the front right now is because the centerpiece of the lookout the central building is actually symmetrical on all four sides 
on all four sides is it symmetrical? So it doesn't really matter. It's in the middle. It's every single side is the same. It's just when we start getting beyond that is, is the lookout not symmetrical. So you can see we've raised all of these upwards. Uh, all of them have ad had four blocks added up on top of them. And what I would then just recommend doing is make sure that the top rows are the same as the bottom. So the rows in between you don't have to worry about so much. But do just make sure that the blocks at the top here do just kind of like join together. Because it's kind of integral to the shape of, uh, of the central building. So what we can then do is we can place yellow carpet on top of all of this. So um, going all the way around the top of this, I just want you to place a little bit of yellow carpet. Um, a lot of these buildings are really cool. Um, a lot of the buildings are mainly kind of white, grey, yellow, and in some cases a little bit purple as well, like a nice uh, a nice shade of purple actually, like very similar to uh, the purple blocks, which is what we're going to be using. So um, there's a lot of trimming using some carpet and some uh, yellow concrete. It really goes together nicely. Now that we've placed the layer of yellow concrete, I want you to place a layer of yellow concrete, sorry, once you place the layer of yellow carpet, I want you to place a layer of yellow concrete that sits up above inside of the top of the circular shape that we have just made using quartz and white concrete. So, um... The reason that we place the yellow carpet is so that it can kind of fade together. It's supposed to look a little bit dome-like in nature. It, it wants to look a little bit like this. And we're then going to extend all of the yellow concretes upwards. So we want to have two rows of yellow concrete directly above the circular lower half of the building, the largest part of the building really. And once we have our two rows of yellow concrete, like this, and by the way, I know it looks very basic at the moment, but we will be making it look way better. We want to fill the top of this in using light grey concrete. So it actually does want to have a platform, it does want to have a top. Um, you would be able to access this if you wanted to. We don't have stairs, so I'd suggest learning how to fly. Um, <laughs> most people can fly in the Dragon Ball universe, so I mean, you know, hopefully it won't be that hard for you to learn. Um, once you have uh, filled in your platform using the light grey concrete, we're actually going to grab the white and we're going to place white concrete in very select places, okay? So, uh, the middles of each of the long sides of the yellow concrete, we want to place rows of one, two, three white concrete. So that goes one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, and three, like this. In addition to that, we're going to pl be placing white concrete in two more places. In the center, in between the rows of four white concrete, we want to, uh, from the center blocks, place one, two, three white concrete as well. So it's, it's basically, you should be able to eyeball it quite easily. One, two, three. You should be able to tell, hopefully, which block is the center. But it is the third corner, if you were like counting one, two, three. It's the third kind of like outward corner that we're looking for. And uh, there you go. So th that looks a little bit more reinforced now, I think. So the next thing that we're actually going to do is we are going to grab the block of quartz and we're going to place a layer of block of quartz that sits above all of the white concrete, uh, above all, uh, on top of the white concrete blocks, but it's basically the same shape as the yellow concretes that we have just below. So we're trying to form a circle like this. And we just want to have the block of quartz, so like that. Here, 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 and here. So, as I said, there we go, that's looking pretty good, I think. Uh, a circular shape. And what we then have to do, which is a little bit trickier, I suppose, is we want to, with the quartz stairs, we kind of want to turn it into a bit more of a rounded shape. So, a lot of a lot of the building, as, as I mentioned, it's, it's kind of cool, like it's... Um, they're very spherical in nature and the ends are kind of like rounded and that's exactly the sort of effect that we're trying to achieve right now and I'm, I'm actually very happy with how the building does turn out in the end when we eventually get there. Uh, do bear in mind that this is the hardest of all of the little buildings that we're going to be making up here and there's not that many of them but you know I just want you to bear in mind if, you, if you're making this and you're like oh no this is this is too much this is this is going to take forever this is the hardest one I want to bear that in mind so uh, hang on so if we destroy that turn that sideways come on I know that you I know that you want to there is a way to make this this happen 
Here. Come on. Connect together, please. Here. There we go. All right. Yeah, I told you. Quartz stairs are so funny. They they don't like uh, they don't like being told what to do. You've got to gently. <laughs> You've got to be very gentle with the quartz stairs. So, now that we've placed the rounded layer of the quartz stairs all the way up at the top, what we then want to do is we want to have a layer of block of quartz that sits, sits up above it all. And the block of quartz is just going to... I actually don't think it even connects together in the corners, quite honestly, but we're going to place a layer of block of quartz just because it's easier to place this way that just sits up and above all of the stairs. Um, and then we'll be adding another layer. Just Yeah, just one more layer on top of it as well. We need to add a little bit of glass to it too i'm saying that out loud so i hopefully don't forget but just up above it you can see that we've added the layer of block of quartz so as i mentioned we want to add another layer just on top like so just like this yeah i do think that the the roof that we're going to be placing upon this i do think that we're actually going to make it a little bit more circular because it's slowly turning into kind of like a plus shape as we uh, kind of like derive it and derive it more so like this. Uh, anyway, on each one of the four sides where you have the rows of three, we're going to turn the middle block into glass. Um, that will help to create a little bit of contrast with all of the white. You may even want to place underneath those um, something that would actually be cool, and um, I'm, I am going to do this, but this this isn't necessary, but um, if you did want to light it up, that would actually provide a nice little bit of internal light for the top of uh, for the top of this too, so that might be kind of cool, and it'll uh, it'll help just uh, lighten things up a little bit. Not not so necessary during the day, obviously, but um, during the night, it'll, uh, it'll keep the lookout a little bit uh, more well lit up. Okay, so we're now going to grab the yellow concrete, and the yellow concrete, we're going to place it in such a way that um, we basically want to place yellow concrete above and on top, but we want to place it on top of kind of like the yellow concrete of the, uh, the quartz that we just used, but the yellow concrete kind of wants to ignore the fact that there's corners. Like, I'm, I'm finding it very difficult to explain to you how we're doing it, but if you can kind of see, basically on, we just want to ignore the fact that there are the connecting blocks of the uh, of the quartz area, and we just want to ignore those, and we want to place the yellow concrete on top. If that makes sense, hopefully, uh, hopefully it does to you. I think that it looks a little bit better. It looks a little bit more rounded that way, uh, rather than what we were doing. Uh, I then want to place a layer of yellow concrete that does sit up and above this, and the yellow concrete is actually going to connect together um, at the corners like this. So it was just that first row I wanted to establish kind of like the base shape a little bit. So uh, that can actually sit inwards a little bit. Um, for the next part of this, I actually want to make, uh, I actually want to take all of the little blocks away that we have kind of like on the left front, uh, uh, left front, right, back. I want to take all those away and I want to turn it into a little bit of a square. So I kind of want to place a 3x3 three three square of yellow concrete and then I want to extend the middle block upwards a little bit. And um, that just helps with the shape of things a little bit. And if you take a look from just kind of below, which is kind of like the angle that we're going to be looking at it at the most, that's how it's going to look. And I, I think that that looks absolutely fantastic. And the only way that we can make this look better is by adding all of the, I don't know what to call them, other than kind of like the entrances, the corridors that are going to join all of this together. So I want you to grab the block of quartz, and on each one of the four sides, and I'll tell you what, why don't, why don't we get rid of, what, what don't we need for this? Um, we don't really need the quartz stairs anymore, and we don't really need the light grey concrete, so we're going to grab the purple stairs and the purple slabs. On each one of the four sides, we want to take the five middle blocks, which is one, two, three, four, and five, so the five middle blocks, and we want to place block of quartz in front of them. The blocks of quartz want to extend out with seven rows. We already have one row, so two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. And and, th and that's all you have to do. So uh, those five rows you want to extend outwards by seven. We're going to then place... Oh, we, we do need another block. Um, we shouldn't need glass for a, a little while here. Um, we need quartz slabs, which I actually haven't... Uh, I don't seem to have on me, which is, uh, which is a little bit bad of me, but I'm sure that they'll be in the item list. Um, you want to place quartz slabs on the ends of the blocks of quartz areas here. 
And then in pairs, you want to place uh, pillar quartz block on the two end rows of seven, and you want to place two rows of pillar quartz blocks. So that's one, two, one, two. You then want to leave a gap of two moving back, and you want to place one, two, and then one, two. And then again, two rows, and this will connect to the building. One, two, one, two, just like this. And you want to place a row of purpose stairs that extends uh, from the building to the end pillar quartz block, just like this. You want to place upside down purpose stairs just uh, in, in between the left pair. And then you want to place a row of yellow concrete uh, that just sits inside between the two, oh my bad, between the two rows of purpose stairs. And then we're going to have the purpose slabs. And these slabs are just going to sit on top of it all that isn't the, the stairs and all of that. We, we just want to have an effect that should look like this. And in doing that, you can see it already makes a, a pretty decent difference. And we, we just want to do that all the way around. So it's quite repetitive, unfortunately, and it is quite quite lengthy to do so one two three four five and we then want to one two three four five six because of course we already had the first row so to we we don't have to play seven we just have to play six so we can place all of this we can place the quartz slabs at the base we can place our rows of pillar quartz block those extend up in twos so basically uh if if you want to think about it like this the uh, pillar quartz blocks are on the ends and in the middle um, we then want to place the purpose stairs. You guys know that the purpose stairs extend from the central building all the way to the end of the pillars. Um, upside down purpose stairs at the ends and yellow concrete in between all of this just three rows like so and then you can put a nice little finish on this by placing some purpose slabs so these are of course also meant to be entrances so you can indeed destroy into uh, into the central building like this and if you did want to um, if, if you don't actually want to make this functional meaning if you didn't actually want to make it so that you could enter uh, you could use black concrete to make it look like a very dark room which we might be doing a little bit later on but i just want to show you guys this because i want to show you how much of a cool difference that makes doesn't like look so so much better and and just wait until we get all of the other peripherals as well it's gonna look so so cool um one two three four five one two three four five six yeah th this build i think obviously it starts off a little bit dull uh we essentially make a a block of iron square not fun not great but it doesn't take long until this build really starts coming into its own. You know, you've just got to spend like 20 minutes in preparation until you actually get to uh, have something that's really, really cool. But I've, I've got to tell you guys, there's, there's nothing that will look quite as impressive as seeing this in the sky in your worlds. Like, if you do manage to make it in survival, I don't know how feasible that is. I, I, I'm sure that some of you guys would be able to do it without, uh, without any problems. I wouldn't be able to. Just gathering the materials would be... Uh, a nightmare for me, but if you did manage to build this in survival, and if you did just have a giant lookout uh, just in your world, uh, I think that it'd be a little bit impressive. So let's uh, let's just destroy into here, and that just leaves us, ladies and gentlemen, with just one final side over here. Okay, so let's just do this one final time. We're going to start off with the one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Whoa, hang on. I mean, wait. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. I didn't want to lose count. And um, we just have to make the foundation here using the block of quartz. And then add the quartz slabs on here on the end. Just add the pillars. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. There we go. And then we can just add the purpose stairs from here. And also here as well. Upside down purpose stairs just on the ends. Yellow concrete in between. Oh, I, I don't know if I pointed out the reason for the yellow concrete. But once we add the purpose uh, slabs on top of here, just... The, the yellow concrete is just from the ends. You kind of get that hint of yellow. That's pretty much all this is, just so that we get this pretty much. And if you wanted to, you could also use your sea lanterns to light up the insides uh, a little bit as well. So maybe like where the pillars are corresponding with those, um, it might be an idea. But we have now successfully managed to place 
all four of our kind of like little entrances and it, it's looking pretty good i'm very happy with that completely lost sight of where the front is i genuinely thought that that was the front then it is it's so symmetrical you've got no idea this is this is the front there we go that's much better so now that you have managed to do that ladies and gentlemen the centerpiece is actually done a very impressive part of the build and what we can now do is we can focus on there's these weird towers okay so i, I don't want to call them weird but they kind of are and the way that we make the towers we need ourselves the block of quartz we need the quartz stairs we need end rods of all things and we need yellow carpet and the reason that i wanted to find the front right here so this is the front of the build yeah i want you to come to the right side of the build we have to do the same on the left on the right side of the build with these four materials i want you to basically where this end slab is on the front of the build i want you to count forwards like one two three and then right by one here we place 11 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 blocks of quartz coming up from the ground we then place upside down quartz stairs all the way around the top of the quartz block and then we place end rods on the four corners of this and then we place quartz stairs all the way around the tops and the end goal here is to be able to just stick a block of quartz in the top with a yellow carpet kind of like this as a matter of fact if we want to be a little bit more real with it we we actually want to use like a quartz slab at the very top and then stick that yellow carpet on top it makes such a little difference but basically you can just see that there's a little bit of a gap and we want to have that on the opposite side here as well. So if we come all the way over to the left, we find this very left slab here and we count forwards from said slab. We want to go like a one, two, three, left one, row of 11, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, And then around the top of this 11th block, as you guys might recall, we place the upside down quartz stairs we stick the end rods on all four corners this also helps to provide a tad little bit of light as well we make a circle if you can call it that of uh, quartz stairs you i don't think you can call it that it's a square we place the quartz slab on the top with a yellow carpet above the middle as well and in doing that we make a nice little bit more progress very very happy with that so now that we have done that ladies and gentlemen we are now going to flip towards the back of the build and we are going to make two structures now i've got to confess to you i'm not 100 percent sure what these are but they do exist so um to make these we are in addition to what we already have we basically just need the white concrete and the yellow concrete and this is both on the right side and the left side of the back of the lookout this is the back you want to locate yourself the back slab here we worked with the front we now want to work with the back grab your white concrete out and you want to find the eighth block moving backwards so that would be the first second third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth right here place a row of uh, five white concrete one two three four five just like that you then want to take the fifth block and you want to extend it inwards upwards inwards upwards like that so you want to form a corner you then want to f extend the last block to the left by four one two three four then down left down left down by four one two three four and then in down in down and then right by one two three four and then in right in so you want to have a white concrete circle you add four rows on top of it so that's one two three four and that is all we have to do for right now so we add all four rows of white concrete directly on top of this this is the base shape of the building it doesn't get wildly more complicated than this um th th there is more to it but um once you've actually made the base shape everything else really does fall into place it, it it is kind of like just like a big uh, a big giant kind of like cylinder with kind of like a domed end um it's got kind of like a little bit of the uh, of the features of the central uh, central building in the fact that it's kind of like got a part that um kind of like sticks up almost kind of like a canopy um an overhang sort of thing but uh, for the most part it, it is a standalone building and i wish i knew what this was i've watched a lot of like i've i've watched 
Uh, hang on. Um, so now that we have added the four rows of white concrete, we then want to add a layer of yellow concrete uh, above and inside this that uh, that basically, again, just it sits above and inside. It's just a circular shape of yellow concrete. Um, yeah, I've, I've watched so much Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, GT, uh, Su Dragon Ball Super, and I, I don't know what these little back buildings are. Um, I don't know whether I've just missed them or I've got a bad memory or what, but um, I want to add another layer of yellow on top of the original layer of yellow like this. And then, once we have our circular layer of yellow, we then want to take the four sides and we want to place two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and one, two. We want to place four rows of two white concretes on each one of the sides. And then we're going to grab ourselves the quartz slabs. And we want to place a layer of quartz slabs that basically copies. It mimics the shape of yellow concrete that we have just below us. So um, it basically just turns into a circular shape using the, uh, the quartz slabs like this. And we just want to have this there we go perfect um what we then want to do and this this is kind of tricky we want to have a layer of uh, of quartz slabs um that again it kind of like sits above and inside it but the quartz slabs don't actually want to connect together at the corners um like the previous shapes did so they, they kind of just want to look like this and then you can take the like the left, right, front, and back parts, and you can place some more quartz slabs, kind of like coming together a little bit like this. And if you stick yourself a yellow concrete in the middle, you've actually completed the roof. It's a little bit of a weird roof, but it's honestly the best I could do. So um, yeah, that's that's actually what we we want to have. Pretty simple, hopefully. And once you have managed to complete that, we are just going to add another one of those towers there um, towards the back. Now, the way that we place this, it's rather easy. We originally placed a row of five white concrete, if you remember. Um, we want to take this fifth row of white concrete. We want to extend out from it like this. So from here, um, we want to count backwards like one, two, three, four. Four, and then we want to place 11 block of quartz coming up from the platform in this position. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 like this. And you should notice that it's actually like level with the other tower. And then of course we just want to complete it in the same way that we completed the other two. So this is actually 3 out of 4. And then we stick, we place the quartz stairs all the way around the edge. We stick end rods on um, on each one of the four corners. We place quartz stairs going all the way around the tops of the end rods, kind of like this. Here, stick a quartz slab right at the top with a yellow carpet on top of that. And from this view here, you can see that things are really starting to come together rather nicely. Very, very, very much like that. And once you have done that side, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to flip onto the opposite side right here. And once again, we're going to locate this quartz slab here. Let's whip out the white concrete preemptively. And from this quartz slab, we want to count backwards and we want to find the eighth block. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. From here, we place a row of five. One, two, three, four, five uh, quartz uh, <laughs> white concrete. And then we extend the fifth block in. And then left, in, left, and then kind of like up by four, one, two, three, four, and then like right, up, right, up, right by four, one, two, three, four, and then like down, right, down, right, down by four, one, two, three, four, and left, down, left. So Hopefully that is in the exact same position as the tower that we have just on the left and I do believe it is just by looking at it We take all these white concretes we extend them up by four one two three four. There we go so this will allow us to, again, hopefully you guys also sort of agree, um, once you've kind of like got this base shape of the, of the tower or whatever you want to really call it, um, once you've kind of like got the base shape worked out, everything else kind of just all slots together rather nicely. Um, once we've got this complete, we can also make the fourth and final kind of like... Um, I get, it's kind of like a light, really. I, I actually don't know the real purpose of it, but kind of like the very slender towers, um, the very with uh, the end rods uh, built into them, like um, 
uh, we only have four of those. Um, after we've done all of this, we can just add a little bit of greenery, and then we can actually work on the under part of the platform, which you guys are not going to enjoy building. I can 100% guarantee it is one of the least fun part of the builds. Um, so we have all of the rows of white concrete. We then just have to add a row of yellow concrete above and inside the white concrete. Now, you guys are really, really going to dislike building the underside of this platform. I'm very, very sorry about uh, about the way that it has to be done, but it's, it's actually, I've made it as easy as possible, add another row of yellow concrete on top, but yeah, it's the, the least pleasant part. If you didn't like making the platform, you're really not going to enjoy making the under part of the platform, I, I can guarantee it. So, we have the two rows of yellow, and then we want to take the white concrete, and we want to place white concrete on the middles of each one of the four sides, if you like, of the yellow concrete. So, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And then we're going to place quartz slabs, um above and kind of like uh, connecting together in a circular shape using some uh, we're using the quartz slabs is following the same shape as the yellow concrete below if uh, if that helps you build this a little bit so just kind of like this that's looking great and then this this is kind of like the tricky part when it comes to the roof we've got to place all of the quartz slabs kind of like joining together in kind of a circular shape like this and the quartz slabs don't want to literally join together in the corners. They kind of want to just leave the corners out of it. Uh, we then want to take the four uh, the four sides, like the front, back, left, and right, and we want to place quartz slabs kind of like protruding up with a yellow concrete on top. And that should hopefully be equivalent to the opposite tower. That should look uh, exactly the same as the other side there. Now finally, we start this off with a row of five, as you might remember this is the fifth block. We want to move out from this, and we then want to move backwards one, two, three, and four. And on top of this block, we want to place a row of eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Block of quartz coming up from the ground. We then want to place upside down quartz stairs all the way around the top of this. And then end rods on each one of the four corners. And then quartz stairs going all the way around the top of this, forming together in a ring. So, like this. Quartz slab all the way up at the top with a yellow carpet on top. And I just want to take a look at this all together from the front view, ladies and gentlemen, because I, this is what I like doing. I like seeing the progress that we're making. Yeah, that's that looks great. That looks great. Guys, we are coming to an end of this don't worry don't worry this is this is a huge part of the uh, a huge part of the lookout complete okay so the next thing that we have to do is we have to make some greenery around the top of the lookout it's, it's relatively easy to do we're going to grab the uh, the quartz slabs for this we'll need grass block we'll need lime terracotta we'll need jungle wood we'll also need some green concrete and inevitably for when we mess up we'll probably need the block of iron <laughs> okay so, first of all, we're going to work towards the back of the platform. We were just there, so it, it, it makes sense. Okay, so I want you to grab the quartz slabs. From extending outwards from the backs of kind of like the, the singular sort of like light towers, I want you to extend backwards and find the fifth block. So this would be the first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Place a, a quartz slab, extend right to, down. Right to, down. Right down to, right, down to. So it, it should look like this. It, it kind of reminds me of like Mario's mustache or maybe Wario's mustache. And now that we've done that, I want you to grab the lime terracotta and I want you to, to take the middle here diagonally and I want you to place one, two, three lime terracottas. One, two, three lime terracottas. One, two, three lime terracottas. Now those correspond to the points of what I will refer to as the mustache. And we then want to place some grass blocks, kind of like joining together all of the quartz slab and the terracotta, kind of like this. Um, it just adds a little bit of greenery like this. And it, it just is it's quite a nice looking shape, really. So that's that's what we want to have. Hopefully you guys will manage to make it. And of course, we have to do the same on the other side. So if you come all the way over to where we have the uh, row of quartz here, and we want to find the fifth block. One, two, three, four. This is a fifth. Uh, quartz slab it left two, down. We then want to go left two, down, left, down two, left, 
down to. There we go. And then once again, we have Mario's mustache, and we place the uh, lime terracotta extending from the corners. One, two, three. Then one, two, three. Then one, two, three. Like this. And then we can place the grass blocks like so. Just in between all of the lime terracottas. Here we go, and it's the exact same formation, and it just, it really does just make that look a little bit better. So now that you've got those two patches, patches of green, what we are then going to do is we are going to move towards the front of the build. So there's a, a couple of different things that we make um, on the front of the build. So, uh, for instance, on the left and right sides, shall we focus on one side at a time? No, we'll do both sides simultaneously. So we'll start here on the left. So from the left, and the way that we uh, devise this is from the quartz slab that we have here on the left side, this forward left uh, quartz slab, we want to leave a row of one, two, three, four, five, and six. Here, you want to place a quartz slab and extend right by six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Forwards by two, one, two, left, connect. Simply, you take the ends and you place rows of three. Lime terracotta is extending up and you take the middle, one, two, three. Uh, you may even want to just perhaps make those two rows high. And then you just destroy in between them all and you place the grass. So let's do that once again and we'll do it on the opposite side. So once more we find the end quartz slab here and we... One, two, three, four, five, six. Here we place quartz slab, extend left by six again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Forwards by two, connect over to the right. We place one, two, one, two, one, two, lime terracottas and we place grass in between and you can see the effect that that has already it really these small little subtle details really do help to put the whole picture together now these two uh, planters are important because we want to find the center of the planters and we'll do this on both the left and right sides um, you find the center part of the planters which is like the middle uh, lime terracotta and in front of these, you want to uh, find the seventh block. So the seventh block of iron here, you want to find like the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here, you place a quartz slab, extend left, forward by six, one, two, three, four, five, six, right two, and then you want to extend all the way back. We now want to use jungle wood, and we want to have two trees. We want to place rows of five, one, two, three, four, five jungle wood, one, two, three, four, five jungle wood. You want to place lime terracotta extending outwards from the fifth block all the way around, um, like this. So just all the way around like this. Uh, you then want to extend a lime terracotta extending outwards from like downwards and outwards diagonally of all four of these sides so you you kind of do just want to make like uh like four diagonals extending down from every single side like this and then a lime terracotta on top of each just like that so there you have quite simply just two sets of palm trees like that and we at least i'm pretty they look exactly like palm trees don't ask me why there's palm trees up here but i'm pretty sure they are um we want to do this on the op opposite side too so we locate the middle terracotta here in the little planter we find the seventh block of iron so that'd be the first second third fourth fifth sixth seventh you place a quartz slab extend left and then forwards by six one two three four four, five, six, right two, connect back, two rows of five, one, two, three, four, five, jungle wood, one, two, three, four, five, jungle wood, uh, you place the lime terracotta, um, did we place it on top last time? No, we, we simply extended all of the, uh, the fifth jungle woods extending outwards like this, and there will be a lime terracotta in the end, but we're just doing it in the different order. And then we just, uh, extend all of the leaves downwards, so these are of course the palm leaves, um, they're the big, kind of like, ovalish sort of shaped leaves that kind of like droop down, um, in, in kind of like a nice curvy way actually and then we place the lime terracottas on top and once you've done that we will have this yes just one little bit of detail now remember earlier when we placed the two um planters kind of like at the back kind of like curving around we want to have the exact same thing here as well so we want to have the same thing on the front now, the way that I would measure it out is say, oh, we would do, I forgot the grass. Uh, did I do that on the other side? 
easy to forget. I don't want to forget though. Oh, okay, yeah, grass as well in uh, in the planters, by the way. So we'll we'll start on this left side here, and we'll take the front left hand corner of the the court slab here. And um, we want to uh, find the fourth block going left. So that'd be the one, two, three, four, like this. Or do we do the fifth? Hmm. Yeah, we do the fifth. So we find the fifth. So going left, one, two, three, four, five here. We place the quartz slab, and then we go left by one. We then go in, left two. We then go in, left one, in two, left one, and then we go up by two. So one, two. So um, we want to have something which should look like this. And as a matter of fact, we will also ex uh, extend this little slab here. Um, just so that it's uh, so that it's even my bad um, we want to place the rows of three one two three one two three and one two three lime terracottas like this and of course we want to have the grass blocks in between them all so uh, very very important we want to have the grass blocks in between them all and we just want to have pretty much the exact same thing that we have on the back. And um, yeah, my bad. I guess we, we should have started on that fourth block. Uh, it was my bad there. But yeah, there we go. That's what we want to have. And now that we have done that, we want to come all the way over to the right side. And we want to do the same thing. So we take the corner planter here. We find the one, two, three, four. Quartz slab. Extend right by two. One, two. In one. Right two. In. Right into right into so a nice corner shape we then place the rows of one two three one two three one two three and then we place the grass blocks oh my bad it doesn't matter this will all get covered up we then place the grass blocks in between all of the uh just like outwards from all of the quartz slabs and we will end up with a very, very pleasing shape, ladies and gentlemen. This is what we want to have so far. Now that, that I think is quite impressive. I really love how that looks. That is awesome. And if only it ended there, it would be, that would be great. But we have, uh, we do have a lot to do. It's very easy, it's very simple, but it's, it's very time consuming. So, once, ladies and gentlemen, you have reached this part of the tutorial in which you have completely added all of the details on top of your platform. Very cool, isn't it? It's, it's an awesome platform. It's an awesome lookout. Very, very impressive. Well, the next part is for us to move underneath. Now, when it comes to underneath the platform, there's a little bit of a color code, a little bit of a structure. It's not quite so simple. We will need red concrete. We'll need white concrete. We'll need blue stained glass paint or glass block. Uh, we will then also need green concrete. That's it. Simple. We will be placing layers of circularly placed these materials underneath the lookout. I'm going to do the first row with you. The first row, we are going to place a layer of red concrete that sits in, underneath, and around the, well, the underneath of the platform. The red concrete, as I mentioned, it's going to connect all the way together. It's going to go all the way around. It sits underneath the outer side, the outer ring of of a block of iron that we have underneath the platform. So it's it's the same shape. It's uh, it's one row inwards in relation to these stairs. I don't know how many different ways to tell you that it's 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 just quite easy to uh, it's quite easy to place. So we want to have something that should eventually and this very very long by the way ladies and gentlemen this is very very long it's very very tedious it's definitely not something that we are going to be doing together on recording unfortunately because it would literally take uh way way too long you guys would tune out you'd uh, you'd probably uh you probably need some cotton wool to stuff in your ears from uh so that you uh, wouldn't have to listen to my voice anymore because you get so tired of it so uh, we want to place Red concrete, as I mentioned, all the way around underneath the outside like this. So, <laughs> it, it wants to look exactly like that. that. Nothing difficult there, right? Hopefully, you guys will be able to do that, no problem. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. We have our row of red concrete. This is the progression of 
layers that we have to add underneath it. So I'm going to show you sing single singularly what you've got to do, but this uh, this applies to uh, like going all the way around through the lookout. So underneath the row of red concrete that you placed, you will place two more rows of red concrete. One, two. Rather simple, right? And then you will be placing a layer of white concrete that extends inwards and inside of the layer of red concrete. You'll then extend the layer of white concrete down by two rows, same way that you did with the red. You will then be placing a layer of red concrete underneath and inside the layer of the white concrete, and that layer of red you'll just simply add another row underneath it. You will then add a layer of white concrete that extends once again, it goes underneath and inside the layer of red, and you'll just have two layers of the white concrete to do. You will then grab yourself the green concrete, and the layer of green concrete will once again, it will go in, uh, below, and inside. And you'll do two layers of that. You will then place another layer of green concrete, this time underneath and inside of the previous layer, and you'll also make that one two rows. And then you'll place in singular layers, you'll place a layer of white concrete that goes below and along the inside, and then you'll place another layer of red, and then another one, and then you'll place a layer of white, followed by a layer of green, followed by a layer of white, and finally, a layer of red concrete will actually go all the way around the inside of the bottom. And that will completely fill everything in. And for some reason, I'm, I'm desiring pasta because this colour scheme reminds me of Italy. So, we want to have something which should look like this. So, if you can imagine these rows that are going to go all the way around the outside of the lookout in that specific order, hopefully that helps you. Something else that will help you as, as, you, do get, um, as you do start building up these layers, you will actually be depriving yourself of daylight, uh, something I discovered in building the original. So you might want to grab yourself a potion of night vision, it will make things a lot easier, and that's, that's how things go ladies and gentlemen, you can see uh, we've got the three layers of red, three layers of white, two layers of red, two layers of white, two layers of green, another two layers of green, a layer of white, uh, two layers of red but not together, layer of white, then green, then white, then red. The layer of red, by the way, it does completely fill everything in. So, I, hopefully, you guys kind of like get what you've got to do. You've th that's 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 all there is to it. We've there's nothing to it but to do it. Unfortunately, so we're going to take all of these. We're going to extend them down, and we're going to extend inwards where necessary. And uh, yeah, guys. Um, I might time this for you. I think I, I literally will. I think I'm going to literally whip my phone out right now. I'm doing it now, and I'm gonna put, I'm gonna get the stopwatch out, okay? And I'm gonna explain how long this is gonna take. Uh, so I'm gonna fill all of that in, I'm gonna add all of that rose, and I'm gonna be back once it's done. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is what the underside of your lookout will look like once it has been 100% fully completed. So as you can see, it really is just a layering process in the order that I gave you, but just so that you can get a pretty good look at it, do remember that we have the three layers of red to begin with, the three layers of white, the two layers of red, the two layers of white, the two layers of green, the two layers of green, the one layer of white, the two single layers of red, white, green, white, and then eventually the bottom, it's hard to see because it is so dark, I did warn you about that. It's hard to see that because it is so dark, um, that is just completely filled in with your red concrete. And something else to bear in mind as well, once you do eventually complete all of that, there are windows in the second layer of the lookout. So the windows are quite easy to make. Um, in the middle of the three rows of white that you have, you simply start from the left and you leave a gap of four. And then quite simply, you place a row of three windows, leave a gap of three, row of three windows, gap of three, three windows, gap of three, three windows, gap of three, three windows. Eventually, you will hit the other side and then you will have the gap of four. And then you move on to the other side and you do it again and again and again uh, until eventually you do end up with hopefully uh, you end up with this so uh, let's take a good look at this thing and then close out the video i can't believe it's done Oh, and by the way, something to uh, something to mention, uh, I did time this whole thing. It took me 25 minutes to make the base of the lookout. So, yeah, I I'm glad that I didn't stick that in the recording. So, this is what your lookout will look like once it has been 100% 
fully completed. This is genuinely, I think, one of the more impressive builds that you can build from this channel. I really love the Hello Neighbor build, but this one I think kind of takes a cake. There is nothing quite like a floating fortress of time. <laughs> <laughs> in your Minecraft world that I think will impress your friends. I absolutely love this. I, I love how it looks. I love Dragon Ball. It is such a great addition to a world. I, I really do hope that you guys did enjoy this one. It, it was one of my favorite to design and make and to finally tutorial for you. If you did enjoy this tutorial, please do remember to hit that like button as it really helps me and the channel out very, very much. If you do enjoy the content, please do consider subscribing and clicking the little bell next to the subscription button. That will ensure that you get all my stuff sent directly to your sub box. And not only that, if you do want to make anything else by me, of which you can see a few things in the background, mainly the Hello Neighbor Alpha 1 house probably stands out to you quite a bit. So if you if you want to make something else that's also quite difficult to make, check out the card system description below and the top of the comment section for more. I do hope that you guys enjoyed it. I really do. And I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs> Goodbye.